Okay, so uh, let's do the last uh, part of content before we get to our case study. Uh, in this part of the video lecture, we'll talk about the next two points, which is America's role in sport internationally and then why studying sports marketing from an international perspective. Uh, so the first thing we have to talk about when talking about American sports uh, role internationally uh, is that similar to other countries as well, uh, but that is the importance of freedom. And so the question you have to, at, to ask is why is, it, why is freedom important uh, to a, an economy? Uh, the first to answer that question is uh, open societies, those that are free, can support the broad flow of ideas, goods, and services. So in other words, it gives its citizens the ability to express their opinion and ideas, which then innovation uh, drives a lot of success for global economies. Which comes up to the next question is why would the American government encourage international communication and transportation? Because our answer is because it supports their uh, business initiatives across the globe. So uh, international growth uh, is often uh, because of the ability for companies to negotiate their own ideas uh, of business and their own innovative ideas, which then helps the overall economy. Uh, one thing that we want to talk about is kind of this whole idea of uh, America's role in the amount of trade. Uh, the volume of international trade in 2013 was over $4 trillion. And part of this was due to this idea of Pax Americana, which is a Latin ter term for American peace. Uh, it's In your book, it's defined as, uh, or said that peace will integrate world economies and facilitate cooperative trade relationships. Uh, and so a good example of this ping pong diplomacy I'm not going to show it in this video. I made a separate video that's posted so you can look at it. Uh, but that's a good example of how peace uh, and essentially reaching across borders can help overall business situations. So why would Pax, Pax Americana cause a free flow of business ideas? Because it allows for import and export of goods and services, which in turn increases our ability uh, to expand our international sport business uh, globally. So if we are allowed to have more flow of we'll just say athletes, our ability to have an increased flow in broadcast will be more likely to have a success in our business because of that. So talking a little bit more about this, why does sport really matter in our global society? Um, a lot of the questions that come up is many times it's about global adhesion. In other words, a lot of times you look at the Olympic Games, uh, people are rallying behind a sport that is this idea of peace, which we'll talk more about in the Greek games uh, in chapter 3, which talks about the history of uh, the Greek games. Uh, but anyway, sport is also seen as an international language. It transcends cultural boundaries and gives us our ability to play sports uh, while we may not have the same language and oftentimes the common ground. There's lots of reasons why we see uh, sport mattering in a global society, and if we have the freedom to expand globally, that's why it's so important, and the United States is one of those countries that leads the way in that. Um, looking at why inter study international sports marketing, uh, there's basically three main reasons. The first one is perseverance and the ripple effect. The second one is we can learn from cultural differences, and the third one is about technology, and I'm going to break each one of these, downs, these down briefly uh, in this next section. So the first one is this idea of perseverance and the ripple effect. Uh, economies that are not engaging uh, globally often find themselves in deteriorating uh, economic infrastructures. Um, and oftentimes, sport is in almost every single phase uh, of society, culture, uh, our politics, uh, and our business. Our world is international and our world is sport. Uh, and so we have to be aware of um, how sport impacts that. Uh, another thing to think about is the ripple effect. So we know that sports impacts our other elements of society, so our cultural, political, and business societies. Uh, for example, just look at the Olympic Games over the last several um, Olympiads, and last eight years worth of years, probably 16 years now worth of Olympic Games and the amount of money that's spent on the Olympics. For example, China and Russia. When China hosted in Beijing, uh, they broke records in the amount of money that's spent to try to host the games. Uh, the Russian games uh, in Sochi uh, hosting the Olympics and then um, is a, ball, a big part of branding the country as a global power not only in uh, political mindset but also industrial and business mindset. So for example uh, Russia paid 51 billion dollars that's with a B uh, in 2014 on a marketing campaign for their country. Essentially that's what the Olympic Games were. 
Um, it says something about who they are in their industry and their uh, um, relevance in our world society. Uh, but also it has political moves. You look back at the 1936 games that were hosted in Berlin right before World War II, and they were known as the Nazi games, Hitler's games. <clears throat> the big part of the reason why they hosted it uh, was to show uh, the world that the Aryan nation ideology and the propaganda uh, and the power of the Nazi regime. Uh, we'll get more of that again in chapter 3 as well. So the second reason why we want to study sports marketing uh, comes back to <clears throat> the idea that we can learn from each other, learn from each other's cultural differences. We'll talk in, the, in a second about the NFL and one thing that we did wrong, uh, but we learn from each other's uh, lessons uh, in our domestic market so that we can expand globally. The problem is whenever you expand, expand a domestic marketing campaign to an international or global community, cultural differences are oftentimes uh, the make and break of the success of that campaign. And so understanding cultural differences and applying them to different international markets uh, is important. Uh, we also want to study international sports marketing because new marketing strategies are often needed to enter into international markets and we can learn from other international markets of successful marketing campaigns. Much of the research that we see in marketing uh, and best practices, so to speak, a lot of it does come out of the United States, but much of it uh, also comes from our international counterparts in other uh, countries and a ways to attract consumers. It's the same reason why we, we would say that um, Notre Dame every year, at least for a while, uh, was playing in Ireland. They would play a game. Part of the reason is because of the brand that comes from Notre Dame being the Fighting Irish and the importance of cultural uh, culture in, that, uh, in those games. The third reason uh, we would want to study international sports marketing uh, comes with technology. It's changed everything we do, uh, and it continues to do that. It has done since the dawn of time. Uh, why uh, it's again it goes back to why some developing countries break into global markets is because of the power of the internet uh, it provides the opportunity for free flow of ideas again it's the importance of freedom as we discussed earlier with Pax Americana uh, but also we have to understand why it's important uh, for consumers to have choices um, and this thing would work there we go uh, sport organizations we found from uh, Greenwell at all which was a study talking about uh, voice found that sport organizations that uh, give stakeholders control in, for example, one element of the marketing mix, that is price, uh, in setting that price uh, in order to, and they do this, in order to increase their perceptions of fairness and satisfaction. The consumer feels like they have choice, feels like they have voice. They made the decision themselves. It gives them ability um, uh, to be satisfied with their purchase process. And technology gives us that ability to give consumers voice uh, and choice through uh, different mechanisms such as social media and the advent of the internet and expansion of the internet to uh, the less developed countries. And the last one is technology is oftentimes, as we mentioned before, the catalyst for sport business growth. Um, it gives us increased capital uh, and also helps us, from through technology, uh, increase uh, the labor mobility. Um, there's lots of movies you can see that have come out. Uh, there's one called Unbroken. Uh, it's about uh, really about World War II and somebody uh, named Louis, Louis Zamperini. Uh, but the movie starts, and it's a really good book as well, but it starts off talking about uh, him as a runner uh, when he was a kid, going through high school, and it doesn't really show, but he also did some college uh, running before he was um, able to get into the Olympic Games and went to the 1936 Berlin Games before the war occurred. Uh, today's athletes, and why I bring this up is today's athletes, they fly over in there in a couple hours. Uh, he would have, he had to take a boat, a boat across the Atlantic Ocean to get to um, Europe. And so just something as simple as transportation and labor mobility has changed international sport marketing altogether. So those are the three reasons why we study international sports marketing.